we have a country weeks away from defaulting on its debt. Standard & Poor reports it may cut the U.S.'s AAA credit rating even if a debt deal is reached by lawmakers. One of the biggest media giants in the country and world is being investigated by the FBI for journalistic wrongdoing. A former government employee faces sentencing in one of a series of criminal cases that's helping Obama outdo every previous president for going after whistleblowers. The Pentagon says it suffered one of its largest ever losses of sensitive data to a cyber attack from a foreign government. At the same time, it unveils a new cyber warfare strategy. And while average folks are still sweating an economy that has taken their jobs, their home equity, their pensions, bringing consumer confidence to the lowest level in two years, a rich and elite group that includes presidents and business leaders are heading to a party at a secret retreat in California. What can I say? Happy Friday. We'll have more on all of what I just talked about in our shows today. But first, why are the elite sitting so pretty? Could it be because they were some of the only winners of policies meant to spur a global economic recovery? Well, that's what my next guest believes. Charlie McGrath. He's founder of WideAwakeNews.com. Hi, Charlie. Thanks for being with us. So. Let's talk about first Thank kind you. of the latest news out today. We have core inflation gaining, manufacturing is slumping, consumer confidence is at its lowest level in two years because people are pessimistic about jobs. That's one reason why. Is the economy headed up or down if you're on Main Street? Well, if you're if you're on if you're on Main Street, it never uh, even started to turn into uh, any kind of recovery. Even though for the last. Uh, two and a half years, we've been fed this propaganda of green shoots and uh, prosperity. But the reality of it is, we, you know, Main Street um, has not even, uh, you know, recovered one job that's been lost uh, since uh, the 2007 uh, recession, the so called Great Recession, allegedly ended in 2009. Who is gaining? Who is winning? What are you, is anybody coming out on top here? You, you think that some of the You bet are. you, you bet they are. You know, the, the, the corporate interests who are the same ones demanding we have a debt ceiling increase. These are the ones, Jamie Dimon's of the world, telling us that, you know, if we don't do it, it's going to be catastrophic. Well, it's going to be catastrophic if we do do it. It's already catastrophic because of the fact that from 2007 to now, we went from $9 trillion to $14.3 trillion. But if these power elite in these, in these corporate interests get their way, you know, they're, they want this. It is in their agenda to get this done because it guarantees profits for them. I got a few examples. Just five corporations, Exxon, uh, had $30.46 billion uh, in profit in the year 2010. They paid zero in taxes, yet they were able to contribute uh, $7 million to campaign funds. I won't go down the whole list uh, with every uh, profit uh, line, but between Exxon, BOA, General Electric, uh, Chevron, and Boeing, they had managed to amass $77.16 billion in profit, paid zero in uh, corporate tax. And they managed to contribute 43.1 million uh, to campaign contributions. Mm -hmm. So that should tell you exactly who benefits from raising a debt ceiling. Let the but, people of the country. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go, go ahead, ahead. Finish your sentence. I was going to say the, the the agenda is let the people of the country uh, have all the burden for running the government. Uh, pretend that we have this 35 percent corporate tax rate, mm -hmm. but in reality, these two big to fail corporations pay absolutely nothing, um, and their profits are guaranteed, and they can't fail, unlike Main Street. Who, mm -hmm. continue, who has failed uh, primarily since 2007 and continues to fail as we speak today. But Charlie, does raising the debt ceiling make sure that average people get their Social Security checks too? Well, you know, the Social Security fund is supposed to have $2.6 trillion in a lockbox, right? That's what we've been told uh, since time immemorial. The fact of the matter is um, the, the people, we take in over $2 trillion a year. We pay that much in income taxes right now. Mm -hmm. We take in enough money to make our Social Security payments. We don't take in enough money to keep uh, funding special interests, plain and simple. And we don't take in enough money to keep uh, this projection of uh, Empire America uh, alive and well. Five military engagements around the planet. Uh, you know, corruption has run amok, you know, primarily since 2008. It's been, you know, peddled to the floor. So, you know, the, the idea that our president comes out and uses this calculated tactical fear tactic in order to scare one of the weakest segments of our population is an absolute and utter uh, insult, at least to anybody who's a, a critical thinker. But it's not just the president. It's ratings agencies that say that they're going to sure. lower the U.S. credit rating if we don't get a debt yeah. deal. So do you not care about what the credit ratings agencies say then? No. No, I do not. Absolutely do not care because they've been, they've been proven to be not only um, failures because they missed the whole entire uh, housing boom or the housing bust, rather, 
um, they're proven to be uh, rating the products that their Wall Street uh, financiers, you know, the ones that uh, the, the products that they create, they, they rate AAA, and now they're using these rating agencies um, as a sledgehammer or an anvil, rather, to convince uh, not only people of countries but nations. Look at Greece, look at Italy. You know, we're, the, the threat of a downgrade um, is causing all these austerity measures to be implemented. These rating agencies have proven to fail time and time again. So then under that logic, if the U.S. credit rating was downgraded, would that then result in austerity measures in the U.S. that hurt average people? Yes. Well, Answer your question. But that's shortly. what you don't want. You don't want average people to be hurt. No. What do you want? No, let me clarify. Let, let me, Lauren, let me make it perfectly clear. As far as my opinion goes, suffering is coming. Mm -hmm. You know, all we can do if we raise the debt limit, we, we might kick the can down the road. We might continue to paper over this fictitious fantasy recovery, this Wall Street recovery. That could happen for another six months, year, two years, three years maybe even. But in reality, at some point, we got to pay the piper. And I think average Americans, at least the ones that I talk to on Main Street, they understand that tough times are coming. And we, we're okay with that. Maybe we have been living as a nation beyond our means. Maybe we shouldn't be consuming 25% of the world's uh, energy. And maybe we do have to experience austerity. And, you know, in fact, I think a lot of people are willing to take that as long as we're not sitting here watching these corporations just rake in massive profit, have to pay shoulder none of the burden, and are able to actually influence with their, uh, you know, with their financing of uh, Washington, D.C., influence legislation that makes sure they never are touched when it comes to shouldering the burden of this must-have austerity. Really quickly, let's hear what the president said about the sacrifices people may have to make. Let's play what he uh, said in his press conference earlier today. Now, what that would require would be some shared sacrifice and a balanced approach that says we're going to make significant cuts in domestic spending. And I have already said I am willing to take down domestic spending to the lowest percentage of our overall economy since Dwight Eisenhower. So if that's the case and money comes out of Medicare, Social Security programs that average people depend on, you say that that's okay? I'm not saying it's okay. Matter but fact, you're saying, saying you'll accept that. Off. You're saying that you'll accept that because pe everybody needs to needs to pay some, have some sacrifices now. We have we have starting in 2011. We have the baby boomer generation starting to retire. You know, if we want to uh, base our decisions on reality, we have to understand that these austerity measures, in some form or another, are coming. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody argues that. I mean, we can look around the world and understand that. The, what I'm getting at is, I think that the, the lion's share of this burden is trying to be forced on to the 310 million people who are primarily not responsible for imploding this economy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Social Security, everything is going to have to be looked at government spending wise. I will say this, you know, $2.4 uh, $2 trillion is what the federal government takes in right now, even in the midst of this so-called, uh, you know, recovery we're in. So we, we take in a lot of money. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we need to start looking at things that are uh, draining our country, like trying to fund Empire America, tr trying to fund these military engagements all over the planet. And that's a whole other topic that we're going to have to have you on to discuss because it is such a big part of this. That was Charlie McGrath, founder of WideAwakeNews.com.